Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I am going to be cooking up barbecued beef brisket on the Primo G420. It's a gas grill. And here is the star of today's show. It's a 14 pound beef brisket, it's USDA Prime. And very minimal trimming today on this cook. Really all I was concerned about was kind of evening out the fat. I got it down to about a quarter of an inch, getting rid of those hard deposits of fat, getting rid of that silver skin. So we'll kick this off by seasoning this big old piece of meat. Here's some uh, Worcestershire sauce, and I'm going to use this to help that rub adhere to the, to the meat, but it also adds some good flavor. And we're going to keep the seasoning really, really simple today. We have here about a 50-50 blend of coarse ground pepper and coarse kosher salt. Yeah, it's looking good. I'm going to allow the brisket to set here on the counter. In the meantime, we are going out in the backyard and we're gonna set up that gasser for a long, low and slow cook. I'll meet you guys out there. So as I said on this cook today, I'm using the Primo G420. Very excited about this because I have never done this type of cook on a gas grill in my life. I did a lot of experimentation with this thing yesterday, kind of dialing the temps, and I think it's going to work out really well. So let's get going. I'm going to show you how I'm going to set it up for this low and slow. All right, first things first. This is what Primo calls the flavor grid. It's basically a drip pan when you're grilling. As you can see, I've done some grilling. The uh, juices will hit this, kind of vaporize and come up and flavor whatever you're cooking. Um, I have this side removed and you can see the gas tubes here. On this cook, primarily I'm going to be only using the low burner, which is this one right here. You can see it's actually a smaller diameter. I have here the smoke box and it's just a triangular kind of a wedge that fits in here. Holes on the top, no holes on the side, and I have it filled with hickory pellets. You can also use wood chips. I just think the pellets are going to give us a longer smoke. So I'm going to set that right here. Again, so this is the burner that's going to get these guys going. We'll go ahead and put this flavor grid back in place. Here's where it gets really, really cool. Again, unlike any other gasser that I've ever used. So, put these down. And these can be used to, to hold a drip pan, but what I'm going to be using them for is put deflector plates on, and these are the same deflector plates that the Primo Oval XL uses, that Oval XL 400. Let's get these guys down. Now I'm going to use a drip pan on this cook. Get the cooking grates down. So now we're going to light the burners. And again, we're going to kick this off with just using the low outside burners. And in my tests, with just those burners running on low, I was achieving a very, very stable, very long, consistent 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So Let's get this going. You always want to light this guy with the lid up. All right, I'm going to allow this to preheat. Yesterday, now this was more in the afternoon, so it's a little colder right now in the morning. It took about 15 minutes or so to come up to that 250. Once it does, we'll go ahead and put that brisket on and we'll move on to the next step. All right, and as anticipated, it took about 15 minutes. We're at 250 and I've already got smoke rolling, so happy about that. Let's get this guy going. We are cooking. Now, the next step is going to be seeing where this cooker stabilizes with that big chunk of cold meat. I mean, I let that thing set out, but it's still much colder than the 250 degrees. So it's going to most likely bring down the temperature of my cooker. So what I'm going to do is just see where it settles in. I'm going to wait another 15 minutes before I start making any adjustments. And at that point, I'll start turning the burners up just a little bit to get it to come back up to that 250. And then once it does, I'm just going to monitor the thermometer and 
eventually I'll be able to crank it back down to the lowest setting once the exterior of that meat comes up to 250. If that makes any sense. It does to me. Anyway, see you guys in a bit. All right, after 15 minutes, this cooker stabilized at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll show you what I did. So I went ahead and left the two low burners in the low position and I added the high burner, but in the low position. Took another 15 minutes for that temperature to go ahead and reach that 250 degree mark. But as I'm shooting this scene, I passed 250. So I am going to turn off that high burner. I'm thinking that the ceramic is saturated enough now with that heat that it's going to hold a good consistent temp. And I'll be happy if it's anywhere between 250 and or 225 and 250. But again, I know just based on my experiments from yesterday, once that exterior of the meat heats up, it's going to hold a good steady 250 with both those burners in the low position. Um, I know I'm going to get asked how often do, you, do I think I'm going to have to change the pellets or add pellets to that smoke box. Um, I'm not going to. I'm gonna, I, I want to see how much smoke I will get from just one smoke box full of the pellets. I'm, I'm just really curious. There are other ways, obviously, of adding smoke, you know, with a smoke tube or whatever, but I want to see what this smoke box gets me on this cook. Um, so, yeah, as far as wrapping, I don't know if I'm going to wrap yet. I, I, I want to see what this meat looks like in a few hours, and then I'm going to make a decision. But if I can do this without wrapping, that's what I'm planning on doing. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, we are at 198 degrees internal now, 10 hours into the cook, probing very, very tender. The cooker ran 250 degrees like a dream. Can't complain about that at all. And we're ready to check this thing out. So as you can see, we don't quite have the color that you would normally have on a barbecue on a stick burner. It's more of a kind of a prime rib color here, but I assure you it's very, very tender. So it's going to be delicious, I can tell you that. That's not a surprise. I honestly did not expect the mahogany color. It just didn't get a lot of smoke like you would expect from, like I said, an offset or even a regular ceramic Kamado type cooker. But again, very, very tender. The next big question mark that I have is smoke. Uh, I know it's going to have some smoky flavor. Is it going to have a ring? I don't know. How much smoky flavor it's going to have? I don't know yet. I'll know in, in a little bit. Uh, other than that, the bark, it didn't really set like you would normally see on, a, again, a traditional barbecued brisket. But it's going to be good. I can tell you that it's going to be good. Just not that traditional Texas-style brisket. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull it off the cooker, wrap it in some foil. We'll let it rest a little bit, meet you guys inside the house, and we'll slice this bad boy open. Okay, the brisket's all rested. And actually, now that it's indoors here in a better lighting, um, the color is actually pretty cool. I mean, it's again, not that really deep mahogany color, but it definitely has some color. And also after the rest, the uh, bark is actually set a little bit more. So it's not what I'd really call a soft bark anymore. Anyway, let's go ahead and cut this bad boy in half. I already called it a bad boy once, call it again. Um, first thing I'm going to do is actually just cut it right down the middle so we can kind of see that point meat. And then I'll go ahead and sl uh, slice up some flat meat here. <laughs> The knife's going through it by itself. Wow. Look at, definitely very juicy. As I predicted, there's not really, yeah, there's not really a smoke ring, but wow, look how juicy that is. Happy with that. That leading edge of the flat was pretty darn thin, so I, I expected that to overcook. I mean, there was no way of avoiding that. The rest of this, though, wow. I mean, again, doink. Very moist, very tender. Mm. So again, experiment. I've never done this before. I'm happy I did. I wanted to do this first brisket on that gasser with just that smoke box. I didn't want to add anything else. I definitely want to try this again, and I definitely want to add some supplementary smoke. Like I said, 
a smoking tube or something to see what happens, to see if we do develop that smoke ring that you would get from, like I said, if I cook it on my offset or, or the ceramic, you know, with the lump charcoal and everything. That being said, I'm very happy with this cook. It is delicious, delicious. And we are going to have a great dinner tonight. So I'm very happy about that. First time I've ever done anything like this on a, on a gas grill. And uh, I have to say, again, very, very pleased. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. See you on the next video. Cheers.